Namaskar. Today, the goal of excellent health is more and more common. Our modern lifestyle has eliminated certain normal practices and elements of previous generations that ensured good health. So the easily, easy availability of junk foods or fast foods has altered our eating habits in this generation. And that has combined with increasing incidences of obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and what I would call quote unquote lifestyle diseases of today. So are you in good health? I would say if you can answer yes to the following questions, you're in excellent health. Number one, a minimum use of food supplements or medicines. Number two, a good energy level throughout the day. Number three, a good bowel movement at least once a day. Number four, excellent sleep. Number five, having a good amount of energy but never getting sick, rarely get sick. And number six, having a good appetite before meals. So there are many ways, many habits we could adopt to ensure excellent health. But the one I want to mention today, which I think is the most important because it, it, health is not only physical, it's also mental and spiritual well-being or peace. And that practice, which, which benefits on all three levels simultaneously, is called fasting. Fasting has been known for as long as humans have been alive, around, and all religious traditions advocate fasting in one form or another. Even animals, they instinctively fast when they're not well. But we're so disconnected today from nature and natural laws that even when our body tells us to avoid certain foods or to get more exercise, we, we ignore it. So there are many ways to fast. For some people, the very word fasting makes them scared. They think fasting is like starving the body. Yet, I know people who look forward to fasting day because they have so much energy, more energy than in the normal days on the fasting day. So there are many types of fasts. And I would say the, the important thing to consider about fasting is that because today's our life is very busy. Our lifestyle is, there's so much pressure from work, from family, from the society. So if I'm going to fast, it has to be neither too long nor too, too taxing to my system. So this fast, which I, which I recommend, combines practicality and effectiveness. And that is the 24-hour fast. Now, 24 hours means from sunrise to the next day sunrise. That's different from sunset to sunset because sunset to sunset means you've eaten both days. But sunrise to sunrise means you've gone an entire day and night without any food. That has a tremendous psychological impact on the mind. And so this type of fast develops tremendous willpower. And we lose that strong attachment to food, which in some cases is the very reason for which we are sick in the first place. And many weaknesses or uncontrolled habits of our mind, addictions, they clear through the 24-hour fast. So there are different ways to do that 24-hour fast. And for example, you might take liquids for that 24-hour period. Or you may drink freshly squeezed juice from fruits and vegetables. You may take water for the 24 hours. And lastly, no solid, no liquid for the entire 24-hour period. That means dry fast. Now, for some people, that seems impossible. But don't worry about that. With the regular practice of the diet, vegetarian diet, the yoga exercises, the meditation, slowly and gradually our bodies become able and our minds become willing 
to do that 24-hour fast, dry fast. And personally, I can think of no better habit than the 24-hour dry fast for all-around health. So many solutions to problems come spontaneously after the 24-hour fast. I get many creative ideas how to do my work in a better way. My meditation is more deep, more concentrated. I feel more connected to that universal consciousness, which is part of all of us. So that's why the yogis called the, that, that fast Upavasa. And that means to remain near to the Supreme. So if possible, on the Upavasa fasting day, we use that, that saved time from eating for more meditation. Or we use the saved water to water the plants and the saved food to feed the animals. Actually, I've been fasting for five and a half years, dry fasting. Not in one stretch, obviously, but a system of fasting at intervals. Myself and my colleagues, we fast four times a month according to the lunar cycle and family people twice a month. So if you're fasting at intervals over spaced time, it doesn't overtax the body and it's only one day. It's important that dry fast, we break the fast properly. So the best way to do, to break a dry fast is by consuming a minimum of a one liter of water and taking half a lemon, squeeze the juice from the lemon and mix it with a, a fair amount of salt. It should be fairly salty. So the, the lemon and the salt together produces a purging effect in the colon. And so whatever toxins are still within the system didn't come out during the dry fast. They come out when we evacuate, we go to the toilet after the dry fast. And then a normal breakfast, normal means light foods, maybe some fruits or probiotic food like yogurt. In some cultures, easily digestible porridge. This is a light food that we can adjust the body back into a normal eating routine, which we could start from, from the lunchtime already. In 2016, a Japanese scientist, his name is Yoshinori Osumi, he won the Nobel Prize for medicine because he discovered the mechanisms behind autophagy. Simply explained, autophagy is the body's process. It uses the old and unhe uh, uh, unhealthy cells as fuel during fasting day. So it means there's a, a type of cellular cleansing. So when the body's clean on the cellular and subcellular levels, many common diseases, they cannot develop. And fasting, it's been showing more evidence, is proving that fasting helps to control Alzheimer's and cancer. Because there's one rule of natural healing which says that detoxification occurs when uh, healing occurs when the body's detoxified and fasting accelerates, especially dry fast, it accelerates the detoxification. So dry fasting, it, it is not for everyone. Actually, back in those years when I was in Thailand, I used to do these fasting camps and the people there, they, they may not have continued the yoga or the meditation, but they never gave up the fasting because they knew that was a habit that would benefit them for their entire lives. So a regular system of fasting, you know, at intervals will benefit our health for our entire lives. But the dry fast is not for everyone. Somebody with a, a weak body, weak health, or old person, someone of mediocre health, nursing mothers, those that have kidney stone or gallbladder stone, those that are on medication and they require to eat food as part of their medication, or those that are doing very vigorous exercise or sports. They cannot do dry fast. So it's best to consult with your healthcare practitioner before you undertake fasting regime. But yes, get into fasting and go into the level, enter at whatever level you feel comfortable with. And even if you're taking raw food that day, 24 hours, you know, you'll feel different if, you're, if, you're, if you are a consumer of meat, non-vegetarian food, or, or junk food. 
you'll feel different. And from there, slowly and gradually, work up the continuum ladder towards a state of permanent, excellent health. I'm sure you'll find this habit of fasting probably the best habit you've ever adopted in your entire life. Thank you. Namaskar.